If you're thinking about getting someone a drone for the holidays, here's some food for thought. A new study says toy drones can be a serious threat to commercial airlines. The study was conducted by Aerokinetics. I'm joined by the CEO, Halsey Smith. Good to see you here. Thank you for having me. So tell me some of these findings in your study that really should be a wake-up call for some people. Absolutely. We found that toy drones are an absolute threat to manned rotorcraft flying inside the national airspace system. It would most likely cause a catastrophic crash and fatalities. We also found that toy drones pose a real threat to commercial airliners, either through ingestion or other drone strike that would potentially cause a catastrophic crash as well. And really, the t intent of the study is to start an honest dialogue about the real risk that toy drones pose to the public at large so that we can find a balanced approach and a balanced solution to ensuring that drone strikes don't occur in the future. So the FAA currently has recommendations to stay several miles away from an airport. There's also this task force study that's looking at this issue. Do you expect the FAA will come up with some sort of restriction on drone use? I don't think it'll be a restriction per se. I think what you're going to see is the FAA is going to come out with a common sense approach to a regulatory body that's going to allow toy drones to be operated safely inside the national airspace environment. So by safely, that would have to be staying a good distance away. Sure, or it have some sort of technology integrated into the system that would keep it from flying you know, above 250 feet or within certain airspaces that would prohibit that operation for the consumer at large. Because what you've seen is with the proliferation of the drone industry has really been brought about by the expansion of the gaming industry as well as the smartphone technology, which has made these toys cheaper and more affordable for the common public to buy. They don't understand the real risk that they pose when they unwrap one under the Christmas tree. Right. Now you're in the drone business, so obviously you want drones to be out there and used successfully, but you're looking at uses other than for fun or recreation. Sure. So aerokinetics is not in the drone industry. That's a common misconception. Actually, that's a great... An unmanned... <laughs> um, well, how you call it an unmanned vehicle. Absolutely. Yeah. So a toy drone or a drone is a, a, a flying vehicle that is not designed with aerospace principles and in industry accepted uh, basic design guidelines. Mm. So they don't have basic avionics packages included. We're in the unmanned aircraft industry. We produce unmanned aircraft that are certified by the FAA. We're in the process of obtaining that certification that include full avionics suites like you'd have in a standard manned aircraft. And that's really the difference. So what we're doing with this study, and we didn't really want to draft this study. We don't like to be talking about fatalities, and we really don't like the C word, the crash word. But we need to have an honest dialogue. And by studying the real dangers here, we can include that knowledge base in our go-forward designs. Because what's at stake, no less, is an entire new dimension of our economy. And that's what we're trying to protect as we grow this business structure, not just for ourselves, but literally every aspect of our economy in the U.S. can be affected by positively by the integration of unmanned aircraft. In what way? Well, imagine moving automatic defibrillators to heart attack victims faster than ever before possible. Imagine the ability to keep construction workers from having to climb ladders to do inspections. Imagine being able to find lost children in the woods when it's foggy conditions and you can't fly manned helicopters to provide search and rescue services. And imagine being able to do things as simple as deliver pills and medicine to refugee camps faster or even when they can't fly to have airdrops or some sort of ground transportation. So many times we're confused in this industry as being the surveillance mm -hmm. arena. There's so many other uses that, that, we're not, that are being overlooked and we're really focused on ensuring that the positives come out of this technology. So what industries are you focusing on at your company right now to try to grow your business for some of these alternative uses? The real process that we're taking here is being able to touch all the different industries to find the custom solutions that they're looking for. And that's how we bring our aspects and our technology forward to deliver an integrated solution. Can you give me a basic uh, trajectory of your growth? Sure. So year over year growth, we're looking at greater than a thousand percent. Wow. Yeah. Our order backlog is continuing to grow. Since we released the study, we've had no less than 7,000 emails in five days wanting additional information. Our website had 10 million hits in the first five days since the release of the study. And today our order backlog consists mostly of Fortune 100s all the way going down to the Fortune 1000s. We're privately held and we're looking at all sorts of opportunities, even M&A and other op options that are out there for us. Well, I'll just throw this out here too. What about going to the public markets? We've highly considered that option. Our, our business is growing so well that we're trying to determine the exact right time that we'd want to do that. Sure, there'd be interest. Well, it's been great chatting with you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. I'm Rhonda Schaffler for The Street.